Restevius is the host to five brand new North American servers, with active non-playing staff and a rapidly growing player base. This server is catered towards the players. The link for their Discord will be in the description. Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you five essential electric circuits that you should put in your base. If you haven't done electricity at all, then I highly recommend you go check out my other video which shows you the basic components. Then once you've started to muck around with the basics, you can start making your own circuits. These circuits are great because you can expand them depending on the size of your base. However, it's important to start somewhere. Every single circuit will require a power in, which is either a solar panel or a wind turbine, and then that feeds into a large battery, which then flows power into the circuit. Although for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be using test generators. So whenever you see a test generator, just think of it as a source of power. The first circuit, which I highly recommend you add if you've never done electricity before is the automatic lights. This is because it's very simple and it's very essential if you're playing on a vanilla server with long night times. So for this circuit, you're going to need a solar panel regardless of what your regular power source is. This solar panel will run power into the E branch as you can see here in the setup and the E branch will branch out that power into a blocker. Then you take your main source of power which runs through the blocker and into the lights. This is really simple because this is all you need to set up as lights work in series so you can have as many lights as you want given you have enough power. The only thing else you need to do is set the E branch to 5. You can set this to higher or lower depending on how long you want the lights to stay on for. The higher you put it, the longer the lights will be on for, and the lower you put it, the quicker they'll turn off. Essentially what the E-Branch is doing, after consuming one unit of power, it's sending the five units of power into nothing, and then the remaining power goes into blocking the lights. So this means that you have to be getting seven units of power from the solar panel before the lights will turn off. The reason that this is so important is because if you set this number too low, then during dusk and dawn, when it's still kind of dark, the solar panel will get a little bit of light and it will actually block the lights. So you want this to be at least a minimum of three, however you can run your own testings, and I like to set it around five. Try it out yourself and then adjust it as you see fit. The next thing you should consider adding are the hidden auto turrets. You can place one of these right outside your front door to prevent door campers or you can have heaps of them around the compound. Remember that this is just an idea and you want to shape it according to your base, not just have ugly squares everywhere. If we come inside we can see that the test generator runs power into the switch which runs into two E branches. The switch is essential because if you want to restock your auto turrets with ammo or change the guns then you'll want to turn the switch on and off. It's optional because you can use a wire tool to cut the circuit, however I like to have it. There's two E branches, one is branched out 10 which goes into the auto turret because an auto turret needs 10 power in order to function. The second E branch branches out 2 power which goes into the HBHF sensor which then goes into the door controller. The remainder of the power can then go into whatever you want. Because you'd probably want more than one of these setups, you'd probably want to add two more E branches and repeat the circuit somewhere else. Then if you come over to the HBHF sensor, you can set it with the hammer to include unauthorized building players. This means that anyone who doesn't have authorized on the tool cupboard will walk past the door and the door will open, shooting them in the face with the auto turret. The reason I like this design so much is because auto turrets that are exposed and don't have any protection can easily get killed by multiple compound bows. Therefore, it's important that you hide your auto turrets behind garage doors and use HBHF sensors in order to make them active when players are near. Remember that you can hide these sensors. As see here, there's a rock in front of the garage door. I could have hidden mine there if I wanted to be a bit more sneaky about it. However, there's many other ways including use of deployables so you can be creative and hide your sensors if you want. Next up is an automatic heli door, which is a very similar circuit to the one previous. As you can see here, we've got an elevated helipad and we've got a garage door, which will automatically open when we fly by with our mini copter. The circuit's pretty much the same. However, with the sensor, we want it to include authorized players as opposed to non-authorized. Then as you can imagine, any authorized player flying the helicopter in would be able to land it on the helipad and then slowly drive it into the two by one. As long as you drive relatively quickly, you should have enough time before the garage door closes in on you. Here's the circuit with two E branches. The first branch is out two power to the sensor, which then goes into the door controller, same as before. The second branch is out three power into the three flasher lights. However, this is completely optional and the lights work in series, so you can add as many as you want. The rest of the power goes into my final light. However, you can completely customize the lights depending on the size and shape of your helipad. The reason I like to add lights to my helipad is if you look at this image here, you can see what it looks like when you're trying to land in the dark. It's really difficult if you don't have a moonlit night, and so I highly recommend that you add at least a couple of lights. On top of that, the glowing garage door skin helps tremendously, and as you can imagine, this is what it looks like when landing when it's completely lit up. It's a lot easier. 
the next circuit is probably the most difficult out of the five and it's the automatically closing garage doors. You can set this up to any door you want and you can set it to as many doors as you want. You can even include a sensor so if someone goes deep on a few doors they'll automatically lock themselves in and if they're stuck with just rockets they'll probably kill themselves because of splash damage. The sensor can either be triggered by flicking the timer switch or if you set up the sensor it can do it automatically and regardless if the doors are open or closed they'll all open and close straight after. This takes a while with garage doors so it can be better to use double doors in some scenarios or a mixture of the two. The setup works best on large bases and I would only recommend using the front couple of the doors so that they get stuck in the main corridor rather than any loop room doors. For the circuit setup you want your power going into the first e-branch which branches out two power into the sensor if you want to add that to your design. Then the power continues on in orange into the switch and then after the switch it goes from yellow into the memory cell. The switch just allows you to turn the circuit on and off. Then out of the inverted output of the memory cell, inverted being key, it goes into the timer. Set the timer to one second and then the output goes into the next e-branch. Then the e-branch goes into the splitter and the splitter splits the power into as many doors as you want. Here I've got one splitter so I can access three door controllers, however if you want more door controllers you just need to add another splitter. Set the sensor to include non-authorized players and then connect the power to the timer so that it toggles the timer. Remember that the sensor is optional, so now that you've set up your circuit, every time you flick the timer switch, it'll reset all the doors and they'll open and close. If you have the sensor in your circuit, then every time someone runs in front of the sensor, it'll do the same. However, if you're worried about people blowing in through the backside of your base and getting access to that switch, then you can set it up so that it only works one time. The way to do this is see that second e-branch, you want to branch out two power and connect it to the memory cell in the right side of the memory cell to the set. Now you notice when the system gets triggered, the memory cell will go from one red and one green to two green. This means that it won't work again. The only way to fix this is to reset the memory cell or just to pick it up and place it back down again. This is perfect because if it's a fail safe design, then you can open and close all your doors and then the Raiders can never do it again. They'll stay permanently closed unless you obviously have base codes. The final circuit is a monument alarm. This one's extremely simple to set up, however for large groups that like to compete with oil rig and excavator, it's extremely important to have in your base. It's extremely customizable and I recommend that you have three in your base, one for excavator, small and large oil rig. All it takes is some power running into a receiver which then goes into an e-branch which splits the power into a light and an audio alarm. You can choose to have one or both of these two. I also recommend that you have a small sign above your flashlight so that it corresponds with the monument. These are the frequencies for the three monuments and for this example I'm going to set excavator so I'm going to set my RF receiver to 4777 and then if we go over to excavator put the fuel in and turn it on you can see that the system works as the light and audio alarm go off. That concludes the end of this video. I won't be doing any builds on the designs as they're very simple. So all you should need to do is just pause the video and copy the circuit exactly as I've done. Although if you have any further questions, feel free to come join the Discord and ask me there. And a quick shout out to Russ Quick Electric because his design showed me how to use the memory cell to create a one-off circuit in the fourth design. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.